The Pythagorean theorem is old, like way old. The, uh, the original uh, discovery of the Pythagorean theorem was about 600 BC. Um, and there's actually kind of a funny story along with it. The guy who uh, discovered it, Pythagoras, was actually born to be a stonecutter um, and didn't, didn't really want to be. So he decided he was going to go out and travel the world to learn about all the things out there. And when he came back, years and years later, he was probably one of the most educated people in the world at that time. But none of his buddy, buddies or family back at home wanted to hear about it. They just wanted to keep working and pay their bills and so forth. So Pythagoras decided he was going to hire a young boy to just be his student, and he was going to pay him for every lesson that he passed. Well, the kid did that for quite some time and decided that was a pretty good deal. All he had to do was sit around and listen. But after a while, he decided he kind of liked learning and kind of wanted to go on and become one of these very educated people. But by then, Pythagoras had run out of money. So <laughs> the young boy had to start paying Pythagoras to teach him, giving him back the money that he'd saved up from being paid to take the lessons in the first place. So it was probably the first time somebody actually paid for private school. <laughs> One of the things Pythagoras learned on his sort of trips, on his adventures, was that if you take a right angle triangle, like this one, and you take a measurement of the shortest side, we'll call that side A, and a measurement of the medium length side, we'll call that side B, if you take the measurement of the shortest side and square it, so you take length A squared and you add it to length B squared, that will always be equal to the length of the third side of the triangle, also squared. So A squared plus B squared is C squared, and that's what we call the Pythagorean theorem. Now, what I wanted to show you was a, a little manipulative. I went ahead and put in values for A, B, and C in a triangle here. Um, where A, the short side, is 6 units long, and B, the medium side, is 8 units long, and then C, the, the long side, will be 10 units long. And we can see that if you take side A, that's 6 units, and you make it into a square, so take that same length that we have on the short side of the triangle and draw a square where all four sides are that length, and do the same thing with the other two, with B and C, you get these three squares of different sizes. Well, if you take square B and chop it up into pieces, and then take square A. So you're taking exactly the same area. You're not doing anything different with the area. We're just sort of cutting it up so it fits in better. And we drag the area of square A over here and B take its pieces and put them on top over here. You'll see that these pieces exactly cover up the area of square C. So that tells us that the area of a square made from this side of a triangle added to the area of a square made from the medium side of a triangle is equal to the area of a square made with the third side of the triangle. So that's sort of a visual proof or a visual example of how the Pythagorean theorem works. And the neat thing is it works with any triangle. No matter how big you make it, as long as it has a right angle, uh, right angle in it, then the short side plus the medium side, both squared, will equal the long side squared and you can try it over and over and over again, it will always work out. Sometimes you have to figure out what way the, the triangles lay out, but they will always fit in there and cover up that third side exactly. It's kind of a neat trick.